to Beyond Damascus, the show where encounter meets mission. My name is Dan Demite, and I'm joined here in studio with my good friend Aaron Richards and Brad Pierron. Good to see you, brother. Hey, Dan. You guys excited for another amazing show? Yeah, I'm excited, excited for this so, show specifically. This ah, is going to be the best anchoring. show ever done. It is prophesied by Aaron, the, the great <laughs> and the wise, that this show is going to be amazing. Thank mm. you, Jesus. We really can't flop now. You realize that? Like, yep, we need to articulate is, well. Is, a really important one. Stay tuned for the next 28 minutes. It's going to be riveting. Gold. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if you're joining us for the first time, what we like to do is we take a question of the week. We each give our own two cents on the answer to that question. And then we give a mission for the week as well, because we don't want to just talk about the faith. We want to live the faith out. So if you listen to Christian podcasts, do something about it. That encounter with Jesus Christ should lead us to a life of mission. Also, this is not just a show that talks about mission. It is a show on mission itself. And so we ask you to hit the subscribe button because for every new subscriber we get for this, we have a mission partner who will give us $10 to send a kid to Catholic Youth Summer Camp. Last season, we were able to raise $5,000 of campership money to send kids to camp. And so hitting the subscribe button has never made a bigger impact in the world than it mm. will do Come on. today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we are going to get started. We have the beautiful, bearded Jack Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the best episode ever. And he <laughs> is going to give us the question of the week. Okay. The question of the week. <laughs> oh, he's is, laughing. Good job, Jack. How do I trust in God's perfect timing? How do I trust in God's, God's perfect, perfect timing? timing? That is a great question. All right. This better be the best episode ever. Who wants to throw in their two cents question. first on this incredible I one? I can start. Um, how do I trust in God's perfect timing? Timing. So I think um, in order to trust in God's perfect timing, we have to trust in God, oh, right? That's... And so, like, I think sometimes in in the Christian faith, we will we will say that Jesus is Lord, but we are in the control seat of our lives. And so, I think if we're going to trust in God's perfect timing, we have to trust that He actually oversees our life better than we would if we allowed ourselves to do it. Mm -hmm. And so to trust in God's perfect timing, I think we need an eternal perspective. We, we can't just have a temporal perspective or we'll always find ourselves questioning, doubting, maybe a little disappointed, or maybe even a little too excited that it happened right when we wanted it, you know? And so when we have an eternal perspective, what it allows us to do is to see that the things that God has promised that he would fulfill in our lives will in fact be fulfilled, right? Because God isn't the means by which I achieve the end of my satisfaction. He is satisfaction itself. So when I am when I am with God, when I understand who he is, who he's called me to be, who he says that I am, and when I'm in relationship with him, I begin seeing that no matter when he provides what's on my heart, the most important thing is that I know that he is going to. And it also allows me to be surprised. So to trust in God's perfect timing is actually to trust in God's gift giving, that he wants to, he wants to give us things in, in, in times where we don't feel like we earned it or merited it, but where him and his infinite goodness gave it to us so we can be in deeper relationship with him. So I would say in order to trust in God's perfect timing, we need an eternal perspective. Now, what does that look like practically? So let's say that someone's... Um, been seeking physical healing from the Lord, right? Let's say there's something that's holding them back from living the life they think they're called to. Maybe it's holding them back from loving their family the way they desire to, or maybe it's holding them back from making the wage that they desire to, or maybe it's holding them back from doing the mission that they desire to, whatever that might be. Or right? playing pickleball. Yeah, sure. Yeah, playing pickleball. Yeah. Uh, shout out to all of our missionaries who play pickleball so often. <laughs> it's unbelievable. We're going to have some pros out of Damascus. That's a prophecy. Um, but I, I think that, like, yeah, in that circumstance, right? whenever they're going to the Lord in prayer and asking that the Lord might, might heal them, or if they're asking someone else to pray for them for healing, the question is not whether or not God will heal them. It's merely when he will heal them. Mm -hmm. That's the definition of God's perfect timing, right? Well, how do I trust in that? I trust that God knows when I need that more than I do. And if I, if I trust that I have a God who loves me, a father that's good, a good father always wants his son or daughter to ask him what they want, and he will always give them what they need by definition. That is the definition of goodness, right? He always wants to hear the desires, and he always wants to fulfill those desires, 
in the right time and in the right way. So what I would say is in order to trust in God's perfect timing, we have to trust in God. And the best way to do that is to see that he plays from an eternal perspective, not a temporal perspective, and that he is satisfaction itself, that he's not someone who gives us satisfaction. He is satisfaction. So relationship with him mm. is actually what we desire at the end of the day. That's curious. Brad, so when, when we're when we're asking about timing, when we're trying to discern or, or to trust in God's timing, mm -hmm. how does that change the way that we behave? You, you used the example of healing. Yeah, sure. And like, is it is it true to say both that God desires my healing, so therefore I will pray in faith for my healing? Of course. Or that God desires my healing in his perfect timing, therefore I should just wait until it's abundantly evident. No, that's right. So that goes back to my um, kind of understanding of a good father would always want his son or daughter to tell him what they want. Yeah. And, and the reason I think that's so critical is, is we don't lose faith and hope, right? Yeah. And I, I've used this dichotomy on the show before, but in a season of my life that I, I'm kind of like just now on the other side of, uh, God revealed something to me that I, I've uh, that I sat with him with for a long time and I've been kind of publicizing more recently, but this, this like faith and hope dichotomy, right? Faith says something like this, God, at all times and in all places, you can do whatever you want. God, you could do whatever you want right now. Yeah. And hope says something like this. And in the case that you don't, I know it's only going to be better later. It doesn't sacrifice either, right? Because what ends up happening is we sacrifice something in the name of something else. We build a theology around our understanding, which is never a good idea because theology is the study of God, not the study of what I understand about God, yeah. right? And so, no, we, we shouldn't just wait apprehensively. Because imagine, Aaron, if, if one of your kids wanted something their whole life and never told you. <laughs> it's not that you didn't know they wanted it, because you could see it in their eyes. You could see, but, but they never told you. It would break your heart to not, to have, uh, well, because you would know that they didn't know if you wanted that for them. Yeah. You know, you would know that they felt nervous about asking you for that. And that's not a loving, that's not the fullness of a loving relationship. Yeah. You would want your kid to say, hey, I want this. And what you would be able to do is you'd be able to say, actually, with the way that everything's been working out recently, you really, you need this right now. And, and, and I might not even be able to articulate to you why it is, or may, and maybe in, in six weeks, maybe in six months, but every single day, I would love you to ask me. Mm -hmm. I, Cause I would love to have relationship with you and talk to you about it. And if it happens right now, great. You can, you can see where I'm going with it. There is mystery still in it, but a hundred percent, we're not sitting mm -hmm. on the sidelines. We're, we're in the game. It's funny that the divine mercy image of Jesus, uh, he asked Jesus, I trust in you to be inscribed at the bottom of the image to St. Faustina. And I, I think <clears throat> it's just amazing. I mean, like for everything, just that prayer is so powerful. And so it, just what you're suggesting, Brad, just that, I'm going to ask, I'm going to seek, I'm going to, I'm going to look, I'm going to knock and all of that. Um, but Jesus, I trust. In yeah. You. I heard a, a homily one time that, that was a uh, less unless. So <laughs> lessen your unlesses. So G Jesus, I trust in you. Unless of course, I don't get this thing I want right now. Hey, Jesus, I trust in you. Unless you don't provide me with the vocation I desire. Hey, Jesus, I trust. Like we, we throw these unlesses on it. And if we just say, I trust in you and we realize he relationship with him is better than anything he could give us. It really does change our heart. It, it changes your outlook on timing. All right, it's I'm gonna go. Oh, bam. <clears throat> okay. Uh, how do I trust in God's perfect timing? I brought out the good old Ecclesiastes chapter three. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to quote from who Ecclesiastes doesn't want to go there. once in a while? Um, this is what the word of the Lord <laughs> says. It says, There is an appointed time for everything, a time uh, for every affair under the heavens, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them, a time to embrace, and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, in a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Uh, that's a lot of times. Uh, that's a lot of times. <laughs> um, but a lot the, of seasons. I think that this, you know, this was actually a really beautiful scripture um, account for me when I was really like waiting, especially in my un uh, uh, younger years of ministry. I just like I had such, I had such this weight on me for what I thought God wanted, and it was like, oh, like it hurt, mm -hmm. and it was painful, and it was frustrating because I'm like, God, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this? And I'm like, okay, they're like, God has a pre-ascribed time. And so 
then uh, that this idea that there's a time for everything, so there will be a time for God's plan that he has shown me to come about. So then, God, what is the time I'm in now? And so there is a time for waiting, right? There's a time for waiting. It's actually such an important time in our church that we give a a, a whole season to it. The season of Advent is a liturgical season of waiting. It's a sacred time. It's a and it's 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 I think one of the most marvelous seasons in the church, right? Because it's highlighting this two thousand year or or multi thousand year history of the Israelites waiting and waiting and waiting for the Messiah to come. And or like the Israelites journeying through the desert, longing for the 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 promised land. That there's this like in our roots, and now we as Catholics are waiting for the second coming when the Lord will come again. That there's there's a season of waiting, and God has given us a season of waiting as a gift, right? And so what is the gift He's providing? It could be different things, right? If you're if you're trying to trust in God's perfect timing, maybe he's trying to develop your character, right? St. Paul says to the Romans, he says, um, suffering provides, uh, suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. And so it could be that God has you in the season uh, of waiting, which feels like suffering because he wants to produce endurance in you, which will produce character in you, which will give you hope for eternity, as you're talking about. It mm-hmm. could be that he wants you to you to love him, not for the future, but just for the present, right? Like, I think there's a big difference between, I've noticed, in singles in the world who want to be married and they're not yet married, um, versus our missionaries who maybe want to be married and they're not yet married. Whereas a lot of times singles, it's, it's, it's interesting, so many singles are like, they just complain, like, oh, why isn't this happening? Why is that a mess? And there's all these sarcastic, like, complaining jokes, like, and they're just longing for this reality of marriage and family life as if that's going to satisfy, versus what I've noticed is that our, our missionaries here, you don't really see that in them. And I think it's because they're living such a life of prayer and mission that they're satisfied, even though they're longing for something, they're satisfied in God, that God alone is enough. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. I have spousal unity union with him. And then they're 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 seeing mission as a current now, right? That their their mission in the moment, as opposed to saying like, oh well, my mission will start once I have kids or once mm-hmm. I finally get married. Like, no, like they're finding mission no matter where they are, no matter what they do. And so, is that a is that a marketing push? It's a marketing push. If you're not married, <laughs> if you are single and you're looking for a spouse, come serve as a missionary. You'll be on mission, and then you're gonna find a spouse. We're gonna redo our recruiting cards. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. effective, actually. So, so I think that's I think that's my two cents. Just that there's there is a season for waiting, and waiting is a sacred season. God has a plan for it, and and man, it's it is it is like you, it allows you to produce such hunger and thirst for the Lord. And so if you're not allowing that hunger and thirst for the Lord to come, uh, you're, you, you're doing, you're doing waiting wrong. Yeah. Can Man. I throw in my two cents? I want to respond right to that. Yeah, do it. <sighs> oh, Whoa, Aaron, let's go. Really good. Really good. Go. At this. Hit it. I told you I've been practicing. Ah, two, two for two. two. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to the podcast, yeah, go to I YouTube. I have no idea what we're watch doing. Watch this episode on YouTube. Aaron, for the first time ever, just flicked, not one, no, but two, two cents. cents the second, second time. The second time. Ever. I don't second. know. I don't, I don't that's think disputed. Video let's, yeah. let's go back. Yeah, yeah. Challenge Jack, flag. He's Jack, it. he's done it before. Oh, he's done it before? Yeah. Oh, Jack, man. challenge flag to both of you. Yeah, I will say, I declared the show was going to be a good show. That's true. This was the prophetic word. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay. Okay. How was the... Jack, can you say the question? <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, how do I trust in God's perfect timing? Okay, yes, got it. That. Uh, I, I, in order to trust in God's perfect timing, I think I think we've got to practice what it means to experience that waiting. The key being with Him. Mm. Okay, when when you look at the stories of Jesus in the Gospel, I think that you know you find that He doesn't often do the same thing the same way twice, and Oftentimes Jesus will come and, and when faced with death, he will uh, perform some, you know, ruckus miracle that just shakes everything on its head. And then you see when he experiences Lazarus's death, that, that he actually, he takes time to not heal or not raise Lazarus from the dead in order to weep and to, and to demonstrate something about humanity in a way that sort of just defies our storyline, right? You can't create a model for that. Yeah. That, right. 
Yeah, Jesus says Jesus says to pray with expectant faith for the healing of those who are sick. Okay, yes. it would the model that I would like to make for that is that that means that the moment I pray, something happens, right? But that's not even the way that Jesus prays. Mm. Sometimes he prays and something happens immediately. Sometimes he prays and something happens halfway. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he doesn't pray yet and he sits there and cries. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we see, as in the example of the the beggar at the beautiful gate, right, that, that Jesus apparently um, would have walked by this man who had been there for 38 years begging at that same place. There are only so many ways in and out of Jerusalem and Jesus mm -hmm. would have used it frequently, right? That, that for some reason he, he determined that that wasn't the time to pray. The important thing is, is it is good for us to, to study and to, and to, and to pick apart and to try to understand theology and, and, and the models and what it means for us and how we're supposed to live our life. But the most important part is, is to live our life with him. And, uh, you know, on, on previous, uh, previous seasons of the show, I I've described a time or two, like, uh, trying to live out that promise of, of feeling that God, uh, had, had told Monica and I in prayer that he had a home for us to, to, to move into a new house. And it, just hasn't happened yet, right? Mm -hmm. We've we've had a couple of years at this thing, and there have been such be a, a beautiful development of different uh, seasons of coming into understanding. Like, God, I really wanted this promise to be fulfilled immediately, and not only did I want that, but it seemed like there were indicators that this would happen. I put my whole faith and my whole trust in this, and then when it didn't, what is that? How does that leave me? Well, the one consistent thing that I, I I've you know, the two of us have, have circled into is that what it, what it means is that I can't leave him during that season, right? I can't, I can't walk away from the work that he's doing in my heart, or I can't walk away from Dan, like you said, the character that he's building in me. And, uh, I, I think that, I think that the Lord is, uh, he demonstrates enough diversity of experience that we can learn from those various different ways to just realize that God is a God who, who celebrates with us in victory. He's a God who accomplishes impossible things. And he's a God who waits with us in the desert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's the God who cries with us at the tomb. That, that he, says to, uh, he says to go and, and to visit the sick and also to go and heal the sick. Like there, there's room enough for us to break outside of a very small box that we like to build our understanding around. And if I were to offer maybe, maybe just a couple, a couple little examples here, it would be number one, when you start to get confused about the fact that like Jesus has said something that you don't see happening, my invitation would just be to continue to talk, to continue to ask him. And if, if you feel like your general questions aren't being answered sufficiently, maybe to ask more specific questions, right? To ask, to ask, um, a question for the moment instead of a question for the story, right? Our, our desire, I think a lot of times is, is for, I'm, I'm going to spend my, my 10, my 15, my 30 minutes in the chapel every day. I'm going to ask God for guidance. And then we're going to, we're going to wind that clock and walk out and it's just going to happen. But the Lord actually desires to, to walk with us and, and to, to have another word now and to have another word when I take another step and something doesn't go with exactly the way that I, that I desired it to. So just stay in conversation with him. Um, Dan, I think it was actually early in youth ministry. I remember you saying this. I don't know if you made it up or if somebody else told you, but to let God's last word be my now word until my next word. That when, when God gives mm -hmm. me a direction that I can place my trust and confidence that that's where we're headed. And however long it takes or whatever's shaken out of the way for me to have faith that like that, that word remains consistent until he says something else. Yeah, that's really good. That's really, really good. I, I, the Lord was just highlighting <laughs> while you were speaking that, Aaron, not to dismiss the power of testimony. Mm -hmm. yep. That like, w whenever you're not getting what you want in the moment, remind yourself that you're in the midst of a testimony and you're gonna see the other side of it. Yep. Like you're going to see the other side of it. I, I don't know when you will. Back to the Ecclesiastes, right? I don't know when you will. But even like Peter, P Peter gets his name, like Caiaphas, rock. And then, and, and then he has like a ton of blunders and then Pentecost happens way later mm -hmm. when he actually takes the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Right. And it's, it's not until Pentecost, the birthday of the church that Peter, like 
Pope Peter comes out and declares, yeah. right? Like, so I think like he was living in a testimony and, and to wish that away, we would lose the richness of what God was doing. So again, like it's not, it's not that you can't like hope that the season ends now instead of later, you can a hundred percent hope for that. And in the case that it doesn't maintain your hope by saying, I'm in the midst of this testimony and God's going to do something amazing. Yeah. It reminds me of the Sirach verse uh, that I think partners well with the Ecclesiastes verse that um, it says some, uh, it's like, consider the generations long past and see, has anyone ever trusted in the Lord and been disappointed? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, it's not a rhetorical question. Like the question's being asked and then there's a variety of questions asked after it. And I, I forget the exact sequencing of it, but, but the author is building in it like, no, no, no. So yep. you can trust him too, yep. that no one's ever trusted in him and been disappointed. Sometimes the seasons are different than you think. What I, I love that because it's <clears throat> consider the generations of the past. So consider what God's done in the past, and that gives you evidence for what God will do in the present and in the future. So the testimony of like, as you were sharing about the house, I'm like, oh yeah, that's so like you like what, what testimony have you gone through in the past that God proved his faithfulness, right? So like right now I have all of this, uh, when I was 19, 20, I had all this yearning for God to do something and it was painful because I wanted to see God bring it about. Well, now I've seen him bring those things about. So now the things that I, he's revealing now, I don't have, I have so much more trust because it's like, oh yeah, I know this. This is this, this, I, I've, I've, I've felt this way before, Lord. I've gotten these revelations before. I've, I've gone through this before. And I know what you've done in response to that. So I'm just going to wait it out. I know, I know the way you work because the way you have worked in generations of the past, but more importantly, how you've worked in my life, you know? I see one more thing too. Yeah. The, the, uh, I, I was having a conversation in our men's group the other day about, uh, there were, there's so shoot the Sagrada Familia, um, the church in, it's a church in Spain. It was, con, it was, it was initiated, the construction on this, on this church was initiated in the mid 1800s. And it was just finished, like I think three years ago, <laughs> right? So uh, imagine, like it's be, probably the, that guy just wasn't doing the paint trim. Is that the <laughs> issue? Yeah, like God, what are you gonna do? Come the trim, on. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, obviously, obviously, it's been in use for I don't know decades, if, if not longer. But um, I, I was just thinking to myself, like God, you've you've made promises over my life. Uh, how many of those promises might even be? might you have given to me for the sake of my children mm -hmm. or might you have given me to me for the sake of, of, of future generations? Would yeah. I be willing to receive a call from the Lord that said, you're going to build a church, you're, you're going to build a uh, cathedral, right? And be willing to invest my time and my money and my energy into a project that I knew not even my children were going to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Hebrews, uh, the book of Hebrews says. It says like, by faith, these men labored for a reality that's they right. didn't even see come about, right? Well, yeah. I, I was going I was going to that same verse when you were speaking, Dan, where, where uh, the author of the Hebrews says, faith is evidence of things hoped for. Yep. Well, how does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because things have been hoped for in the past and they've come to be. Mm -hmm. And so my faith in the present is saying it's evidence of things I've hoped for before. So the things I'm hoping for now in alignment with the Lord, they're going to come to pass, whether it be this generation, the next generation, whether it be temporal or eternal, whether it be now or on the other side of eternity, mm -hmm. like, but, but that stuff we can, I really honestly feel the Lord on that. We can release the pressure we we feel to figure that out when we know the Lord deeply, mm. because he, he has what is best for us in mind always. And when we really, really, really get that, we feel so much more free. I hope you guys are enjoying the best episode ever. We're about to switch <laughs> it, over. It has to, been said. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we're going to switch over to the mission of the As week. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's hear the mission of the week. Who's got one? Yeah. I've, I've got just a simple one to, to kind of jump off of my, my two cents earlier that don't, uh, don't, don't try to have conversation with God in too grand or general or formal a way that God actually wants to, to talk about the details of your life as they happen. So, uh, I, I think, um, ask simple questions. I guess that's where I'm going. Ask simple questions and don't feel like something is too simple for, uh, to, to be legal in prayer. Mm -hmm. my, my mission of the week comes from Garth Brooks. 
Um, oh, come on. Thunder yeah. rolls? No, uh, just... Yeah, friends in low places. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. What's that say about Aaron and I, Dan? No. The thunder rolls, that, that actually sounds like God the Father's yeah, yeah, power, yeah. friends in low places. That sounds like the incarnation. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, uh, sometimes I thank God for unanswered uh, prayers. Unanswered prayers, yeah, yeah. yeah. So why don't you just thank God um, for the things that you're struggling with right now? Like, actually thank him that he hasn't given you those things yet because he's perfect and you're not. So thank him for his perfect timing. Thank him for the season he has you and thank him for the fact that you are crying out and he's hearing, but he's not giving yet. Just be grateful with, with, with where you're at. Yeah. My, my um, mission of the week is for those of you who have been apprehensive to tell the Lord what you want. I want to encourage mm-hmm. you to go to prayer and say exactly what you want to the Lord. Maybe even make a list like, Lord, I desire this. I don't want you to think like, should I desire this? Is it the right time to desire this? Is someone else better suited to have this in this season? Should someone else get this? I can take a back seat. Like none of that because God's infinite and he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't need the space that you give him. He, he, uh, he's the one who created space. And so, um, like I, I want you every day this week to go into, to really just allow your prayer time to be that like, Lord, Lord, these are the things I want. And because I know you're a good father, I know you deserve to hear it from me. Mm-hmm. You deserve for me not to live in the shadows, but to live in the light. And you deserve to hear from me that I want this, even though I don't have it yet. I desire this, even though I don't have it yet. Yeah. Love that. That's so good. if you're listening and you are struggling to trust in God's perfect timing, we understand it's mm-hmm. hard. And so we just want to pray with you right now mm-hmm. that you would be blessed, uh, to trust in God. Aaron, yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking of going back to the person who asked this question. Mm-hmm. Uh I, just the Lord's given giving me a heart for you. Mm-hmm. And uh I just I, I I want to pray in partnership with him that the Lord would be close. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, let's pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh Jesus, you not only call us to be faithful with you, to you, you call us into relationship with you. But God, you demonstrate what it's like to suffer with us and to wait with us and to wait when it seems like all hope is lost and to wait when it seems like uh, you're on your own. So Jesus, I pray that you would, you would move heaven and earth to be close to us in those times of waiting. And for whatever that situation is that's prompted this question today, whether it be a, a, a loss or an unfulfilled promise or um, some burden that that is carried elsewhere. Lord, I pray in your name that you would come and you would lighten that burden, that you would draw close and you would reveal the the true grace and the true strengthening that comes from knowing that you're at our side. So Jesus, stay close to us and let us meet you in the in the struggle and in the waiting. And remind us, Lord, that you're that you're here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 In the Father, and the Son, Father, and the, Son and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. You are listening to Beyond Damascus, the show where encounter meets mission. Brothers and sisters, we love missionary activity. We are a church called on mission. And so today we want to remind you that mission, mission makes, makes sense. sense. Uh, see you next week. God bless. Get it? Thanks. Get it?